Es dauert nicht mehr lange, bis wir nach Hause gehen, singt dieser Chor, der er zusammengezählt an die 300 Jahre Knast abzureißen hat. Wir sind in der Kapelle des Hochsicherheitsgefängnisses von Moundsville im amerikanischen Staat West Virginia. Hier sitzen 650 Kriminelle, bewacht von einem Stab von 240 Aufsehern. Bei einem Ausbruch vor zwei Jahren wurde ein Aufseher ermordet. Der Täter ist noch flüchtig. Dies sind die ganz schweren Jungs in einem Land, wo siebenmal so häufig gemordet wird wie bei uns. Und wo sich eine Handfeuerwaffe so leicht kaufen lässt wie eine Glühbirne. 55 Millionen Revolver und Pistolen sind vorhanden. Wer noch frei herumläuft, hat die Seine bloß noch nicht abgefeuert. Auf Passanten, Polizisten oder den Präsidenten der Vereinigten Staaten. In Amerika steigen die Gewaltverbrechen um 13 Prozent im Jahr. Gleichermaßen in den Staaten mit milder Gesetzgebung und solchen mit Todesstrafe. Die meisten Täter sind zwischen 15 und 24 Jahre alt. Hier in Marnsville wird etwas Neues ausprobiert. Die Verbrecher selber sollen das Verbrechen verhüten helfen, indem sie den Jugendlichen zeigen, was das bedeutet, knascht. Und der Mann, der diese Minizelle bewohnt, ist einer von denen, die sich dazu gemeldet haben. Er ist zu 20 Jahren verurteilt wegen bewaffnetem Raubüberfall auf einen Delikatessenhändler, der aber seinerseits zurückschoss. Eine Szene, wie man sie zehnmal täglich im kommerziellen amerikanischen Fernsehen angeboten kriegt, das Mike Brown hier genüsslich betrachtet. Die Häftlinge in Marnsville werden nicht schlecht verpflegt. Sie bekommen dasselbe Essen wie ihre Bewacher. Ja, man hat durchaus den Eindruck, dass sie dasselbe Leben leben wie ihre Bewacher, dass sie an der nämlichen Sklavenkette hängen, dass sie alle die gleichen unsinnigen Runden drehen. Die Schließer nicht weniger frustriert als die Eingeschlossenen, beide zur tödlichen Bedeutungslosigkeit ihres Tuns verdammt. Ins Groteske gesteigert sieht man das in der juridischen Bibliothek, wo die Häftlinge auf Staatskosten studieren dürfen, mit welchen Paragraphen sie am besten den Vollzugsbeamten an den Leib rücken. Darunter der lebenslängliche Willie Leonard, ein weiterer Freiwilliger des Abschreckungsexperiments, das Sie gleich sehen werden. Im Staat der West Virginia sind die Beamten den Häftlingen persönlich haftbar, die sie mit einer Flut von Prozessen überziehen. So kassierte kürzlich einer 750 Dollar wegen Unrecht verordneter Einzelhaft. Wer in diesem Teufelskreis ist hier noch strafender? Wer sträfling? Ein anderer Freiwilliger des Experiments ist der fröhliche Mörder George Anderson. Man muss sich aber sehr hüten, diese dick aufgetragene Gemütlichkeit von Wächtern und Bewachten für bare Münze zu nehmen. In Wirklichkeit findet hier ein Dauerkrieg statt, jeder gegen jeden und am Ende jeder gegen sich selber. Hier der Älteste der Freiwilligen, der dreifache Notzüchter Harrods, genannt Big Charlie. Oh, oh, oh. 
Die Mauer ist 100 Jahre alt. Sie trennt, was eigentlich zusammengehört, die drinnen und die draußen. Die Landschaft um das Gefängnis ist ein Spiegelbild dessen, was sich innen abspielt. Beiderseits alles gleich hässlich, langweilig, zusammenhanglos, im tiefsten sinnlos. Hier ist altes Indianerland, später Pionierland. Für was soll man heute leben? Die Antwort, die unsere Gegenwart zu bieten hat, lautet, um Erfolg zu haben, um reich zu werden. Aber wie sollen diese armen Teufel je reich werden? Also tun sie das Einzige, das ihnen Glück vorgaukelt, anstelle dieser nichtssagenden Straßen- und Blechhülsen. Fast jeder Häftling, mit dem ich sprach, hat seine Tat unter dem Einfluss von Rauschgift begangen. Das soziale Experiment, um das es hier geht, führt zwei Gruppen zusammen, die Verbrecher und die, die es werden wollen. Diese Kandidaten der Jugendkriminalität wohnen in diversen Erziehungsheimen des Staates, so auch hier. Dieses Heim gilt als fortschrittlich. Die Erzieher sind jung, nett und liberal. Nur viele Ideen haben sie den Kindern nicht beizubringen, da sie selbst keine besitzen. Hier ist Jerry, ein Schläger und Alkoholiker. Die 14-jährige Wendy, süchtig, gilt als unerziehbar, so wie überhaupt die meisten hier von ihren eigenen Eltern eingeliefert wurden. Und jetzt werden sie den Alten mal zeigen, was in ihnen steckt. Ein Neuankömmling, Everett Janovic. Eltern geschieden, gilt als unerziehbar, von zu Hause weggelaufen. Adresse. Name des Vaters. Gleiche Adresse wie du. Not my dad's. Nein. Okay, what's your dad's address? I don't know. Wo wohnt er? Okay. Weiß ich nicht. Larry und Jay zeigen uns den Schlaftrakt. Hier ist es bei allem Komfort tatsächlich gelungen, etwas noch Mieseres zu bauen als den Knast. Dass auch der Geist, der Schönheitssinn, die Fantasie der Kinder Nahrung brauchen, Darauf ist man hier noch nicht gekommen. Der zwölfjährige Vince, auch ein unerziehbarer in Stubenarrest. Ebenso der 15-jährige Bob. Und noch einer, dessen Namen ich nicht mehr weiß. Was ist los mit diesen Kindern? Nichts weiter, als was mit den Erwachsenen los ist. Sie wissen einfach nicht, wozu sie da sind. Also wollen sie sich wenigstens amüsieren, hauen, klauen, haschen. Dafür werden sie hier sozusagen eines Besseren belehrt. Vor ein paar Tagen gab es hier richtigen Zunder. Einen Aufstand. Nur zum Spaß. Wir haben einfach verrückt gespielt. Warum? Weil man uns laufend ausspioniert. Warum bist du hier? Diebstahl, während ich auf Bewährung war. Wie alt bist du? 16. 14. Hab ein Auto gestohlen. Was wollt ihr mit eurem Leben anfangen? Bergarbeiter. Schweißer. Auch die Fenster hat man uns jetzt vergittert. Ihr könnt nicht mehr raus. 
Vielleicht doch. Das nächste Mal, als sie rauskamen, war es aber auf diese Art. Sind das noch Kinder? Amerika hat Angst vor ihnen. Im Staat der New York hat man kürzlich das Höchstalter für Jugendkriminalität von 16 auf 13 heruntergesetzt. Wir sind auf Tagesausflug vom kleinen Knast in den großen, vom Fegefeuer in die Hölle zu einer Rosskur, bei der ihnen das Lachen vergehen soll. Abteilung für Korrekturen heißt ironischerweise das Zuchthaus, als wäre man noch in der Schule. Hier wird man Ihnen jetzt zeigen, was eine Harke ist und dass man damit nur sein eigenes Grab schaufelt. Du hast nicht zu reden, du hast nur geradeaus zu sehen. Hold your arm, straight up. Touch head back. Officer Wright. Spread your legs. Who's the other lady out there? Counselor. Touch head back. Get your coats. Once you go in there and you pound on that metal door. When he opens the metal door, you're standing in line behind the people that's already in there. You got it? Yes, sir. Go in that door. You have a coat? Yeah, it's right there. Otherwise, you get it. Right here. Die Welt ist voll Königen und Königinnen, die dein Auge blenden und deine Träume stehlen. Sie ist Himmel und Hölle zugleich. Nimm dein Kaugummi aus dem Mund. Ihr untersteht jetzt unseren Gefängnisvorschriften, als wärt ihr verurteilter Häftlinge. Ist das klar? Was immer euch von nun an gesagt wird, gilt als Befehl. Wir werden übrigens die kommenden Sätze nur stichwortartig zusammenfassen und vor allem die Kraftausdrücke unübersetzt lassen. Follow me. Come on, let's go. I ain't got all day. 
Hier sitzen jetzt die Mike Brown und Willie Leonard und Big Charlie und wie sie alle heißen, den Kindern gegenüber, die sie zur Raison bringen wollen. Eine Therapie für beide Teile, veranstaltet von einem Gerichtspsychologen, der sogar aus eigener Tasche dafür zahlt. Zwanzig, dreißig, vierzig Jahre bis zu lebenslänglich haben die Insassen abzusetzen. Und Anderson sogar lebenslänglich ohne mögliche Begnadigung. Now, you got that expression on your face, like I did something wrong, like you want your shit back. You want it back? I didn't say nothing. Huh? I didn't say nothing. You want yours back? Yes, sir. You want, you want to get it? Do you want your shit back? Yes, sir. Do you want to get it? Yes, sir. Get it. Get on, kick the shit out of him. Now see, here one motherfucker said, I don't want my shit back, sir. He's timid from Jump Street. He's very timid. A timid motherfucker like this mother, stand up, motherfucker. You stand up. Come on out here. I'm gonna front you out in front of your friend. Stand right here. Now this timid motherfucker, I asked him if he wanted his shit back. I don't want it back, sir. But he coming here with, he coming here with that look. Baby talk, that little shit grin on his face. He get ripped off every day. But this motherfucker, he wanted this shit back. So he might not get ripped off, because he might defend himself. He got long hair. He looks good. In here, he's appealing. And what I mean by appealing, I make him my boy. When he get money orders in, that's mine. He get packages in, that's mine. And any time I come from work or something, he'll take care of me. Anything I want, he'll do for me. What's your name, girl? What'd the man tell you when he come up to the bench, huh? This is your motherfucking name. Didn't he give you a card? God damn it, what is it? Well, what the hell are you talking about, Stacy? All that Stacy bullshit don't go in here. Every goddamn one of you is gonna be in here if you fuck around. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir! Now, This motherfucker right here, a couple of these is what got me started. 14 goddamn years old. I am now 32 years old, been in the penitentiary 13 years. Not just in here, three or four fucking states. 
because I don't give a fuck about nothing. The motherfucking LSD, that motherfucking mescaline and all that shit fucking up your mind, you're going to be in the penitentiary. Because when it warps your brain so fucking much, you don't know what's happening. You don't know what you're doing. The next thing you know, you laying in the county saying, Mommy, Daddy, come and get me. It ain't going down like that in here, girl. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The probation officer's all up in your face saying, Oh, we got you now. They ain't gonna make you a snitch or you going to jail. And then they got something nasty out there right now. It's called angel dust. PCP. 73, I'm on parole in Parkersburg down there. I did four dimes of it, didn't know where I was coming or going. A motherfucker, man, I just went crazy. I shot a motherfucker twice. He shot me four times. Four times this horse shot me. And I live. You know why I live? Because I didn't give a fuck. Uh, watch me. Go watch me. You got one now? You want that back? How bad you want it? You want to give me a little kiss for it? You want to give me a little kiss for it? You want it very bad. You don't want to give me a little kiss for it. You make good coffee? When I get up in the morning, you have my coffee ready for me? You're not trying to scare you, trying to help you. Can't you see that? Evidently, you weren't listening. He wouldn't have sent you back here. Just say what it is. We're not going to let y'all run nothing with you. This is ours. So you either listen or you get out. And you can't get out until the time is up. Don't you know they have a penitentiary for women? It's called Piss Points. Say, like I tell y'all I know. Still, I had to rob. I had to make my girlfriend sell pussy so I could get my dope. That's how the game was played. And I played it to the motherfucking max. That's right. I was in the 10th motherfucking grade. I was 15 years old, strung out on her run. And you motherfuckers, you, you, and you, I know y'all getting high. You raise your hand. You motherfuckers think you're tough, but ain't none of you motherfuckers tough. And you damn sure ain't tougher than dope. Dope will make you hate your mama. Dope will make you steal from your family. Dope will make you kill a motherfucker. If you wake up sick and you ain't got nothing to put in you, you'll kill a motherfucker to get that dope. That's what dope will do to you. I'm not talking about no reefer. I'm not talking about no PCP. That's bullshit. And if you're out there getting high now, playing with them little petty drugs, you're going to lead up to some hardcore drugs, I'm telling you. Ain't no way in the hell you can deal with it. You can't. You ain't mentally prepared. Ain't nobody mentally prepared or physically prepared to deal with no strong drugs. And if the motherfucker got a habit, that's what he living for. He living for the dope. From the morning, he get up, he looking for a fix until he go to bed at night. He got to have a fix. That's how it is. Drug takes your life. It takes control of everything. I woke up one morning. I'm in the 10th grade. My nose is running. I'm sick in the stomach. I got cramps. I don't know what's happening to me. I just know that I'm sick. My older brother coming out, he said, man, you got a Jones. I said, what's a Jones? He said, you hooked on dope. I said, no, I just do it on the weekends. I used to just do it on the weekends. But it got so good to me on the weekend, why wait until the weekends to get high? I started getting high on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, every day. Till I got out there so far, the dope man ain't gonna give me none on credit. He can't do business like that. You bitch! I cross your motherfucking legs! I cross your motherfucking legs! God damn it, you came in there and told you to keep a butt on the goddamn floor. You gonna do that, you understand? Yes, sir. 
Speaker! Yes, sir. Get your motherfucking hands on your goddamn knees. Let's all get a motherfucking thing straight from the get-go. I'm running the motherfucking show now. When I'm up here, you do what the fuck I say do. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Yeah, God damn it! Yes, yes sir. sir! You was told to get your motherfucking feet fed on the floor, to keep it together in your hands and your goddamn knees. Everybody do it, don't let me catch no motherfucking without it. My name is 48223. I'm doing a life sentence for first-degree murder. It ain't hard to get a motherfucking murder rap. We talked about robbing a goddamn store. One motherfucking day I got tired of talking about it, I thought it was time to do it. I went in the motherfucking store, I put the gun to the motherfucker's head and told him to kick out the money. The guy said, huh? Huh? I said, give me the money, fool. Huh? And he slammed the motherfucking cash register shut. It fucked me up. I got a gun to a man's head and he ain't doing what the hell I tell him to do. I'm trying to get out the goddamn store, but you know what? I wasn't never scared to pull the motherfucking trigger. I done shot one motherfucker, I done killed another one, I done shot it a whole lot more. It don't make me no goddamn difference. Like I say, you live a hard life to keep on. Right now, I'm stuck in this stinking motherfucker right here. This is the nastiest, lowest, slimiest motherfucking place on earth. Ain't nowhere else on the planet Earth you can go that's gonna be more degrading than a motherfucking penitentiary. They don't feed you a goddamn thing. The food tastes like shit. I mean, it tastes just like motherfucking shit. And either you eat it or you don't motherfucking eat it. It's just that goddamn simple. You don't have no motherfucking choice. The only motherfucking excess of money you get is the motherfuckers that send it to you off the goddamn street. People on the street, I get $10 a month from the motherfucking street. I make $10 in here for throwing some goddamn bricks. The hell can I learn fucking with a damn brick? You don't get no motherfucking respect in here. There's one set of motherfucking rules for you and one set of motherfucking rules for them. They do what they want to do, you do what they tell you to do. It's just that goddamn simple. Do you understand what I'm telling you, boy? Speak up. Yes, yes what? Yeah. Get up, motherfucker. See that guy right over here, the second guy from there? Go on over there. Move, motherfucker! What happens if he dies? You might yeah, have he's he's dead. You get right. charged with murder. You knock him down, you know? Yeah. He might have been an epileptic. Anything could have happened. You better start thinking about that, bro. You gonna be in here. And I guarantee you, if you ain't in here, you'll be in Ohio. Like Lucasville, Mansfield, Lebanon, they got a whole bunch of them that are waiting for a pretty motherfucker like you to come on in. Now, when he tells you to put his hands on you here, you keep on your leg. To go off on you. Such a key. For coming down to it, motherfucker. Oh, don't Just get on back on it. I told the fuck told you to come over here. I took that damn man. I took my motherfucking ass. Bitch, I don't want you over here no more. Just sit on the bench. Figure out how you gonna get there. On the bench. They don't give a motherfucker. You call yourself doing trying me, huh? Is that what you're doing? Motherfucker, I'm running this. Didn't I tell you I'm running this? I told you I don't want your ass over there. God damn it, you don't come back till I say come back. And I say get on the bench. Take your choice. Which one you want to yeah, be? Yeah, well, you stand there and think about it, stupid motherfucker. And step over here. Try, see which one of us you want to try. Yeah, make your motherfucking man up. Once you make your man up, let me know about it. 14 years old. I don't know why or all the fucking reasons that I got into drugs, 
I'm no fucking psychiatrist. What I do know, I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel like being me was good enough around my friends. I feel like I had to be what they wanted me to be. And bitch, fuck this dude with the camera. You watch me when I'm talking. I didn't feel like I was good enough being around my friends. Like I had to be what they wanted me to be. Being me just wasn't good enough. So when my neighbor turned me on to some LSD when I was 14, I fit right in. I was part of the crowd. From that time on, through high school, I stayed loaded. I stayed in the drugs because I was a tough motherfucker. I had the chicks, I had the reputation, and you're bothering me, get the fuck out of my face with the camera. Dumb motherfucker, how you think I feel now? I'm not getting another goddamn chance. I'm not getting another trial. Dumb motherfucker, how do I feel? How do I feel? You don't know. You don't know a fucking thing. You're going to know what it feels, dumb motherfucker, when your ass swings in through the door down there, and you're going to know what the weight feels when you're 75% dead. You're going to know that feeling, my man, because it's stupid motherfuckers like you. You're going to know what it is to eat, sleep, and breathe air. That's what you're going to know. And every fucking thing else falls away when you come in here. Everything. Your friends, people you call your friends, they are gone. They ain't going to come see you. They ain't going to write you. Your family, they're going to visit you once a week, once a month, every other month, once a year, and they're gone. They take for granted that you're always going to be here so they can come up and visit you anytime they want. Finally, they get tired of just coming. What, what the fuck do you see in this place, man? What do you see in this place? What, am, I, am I your hero or something? That's what you want to be. You, you, you want to grow on up to be a murderer, right? You want to grow on up to be a fucking armed robber, right? Answer me, man! Yes, sir. Are they your heroes back here? Yes, sir. Then what the fuck are you doing? What's so special about this place, man? I can't bend down a bar on this window to get out. I don't have a key to the door to get out. None of these people can. You motherfuckers. T tell them why I can't get out and you are kicking down the motherfucking door to get in here. Tell them from right where you're sitting, I want to know so I can start hunting today for it. Tell them why you are kicking down the motherfucking front door. Tell them. I'm not. You're not. Speak, Speak up so they can hear you, man. I'm not. You ain't kicking down the front door, huh? The little bullshit you're doing, man, I want to tell you something. I'm going to be here until I fall over fucking dead. They throw dirt on me. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be here when you come. See, you're a little petty. I'm not bullshit. If you steal something from my people on the outside, remember what I look like. Don't look over there. Remember what the fuck I look like, and you better hope you remember what my family looks like. Because if you steal from them, if you hurt them in any fucking way, when you come here, I'll send you to hell the first week. Fuck you, dumb motherfucker. <clears throat> Ten years ago, I was right where you kids, kids, punks, whatever you want to call yourselves are today. They shipped me off to Belmont County. They took me from Belmont County to Mansfield. Five tiers high, 50 cells long, stuck me back in 45. I'm not going to kick you in the ass. I'm going to ask you to read. Headline, please. Teens get 20-year prison sentence. OK, have a seat. What's your name? 6149. 6149, how old are you? 16. Read the headline on the top line. Death penalty. Wow. Death penalty asks for youth. A 16-year-old youth should be sentenced to death for murder. A 7-year-old girl, a okay, wolf that's, circuit. that's plenty. Pass it down. Death penalty for a 16-year-old. Seventh man since Kentucky changed the death penalty, and not the first 16-year-old to get it. No, sir. You start wondering why when you keep reading. OK, you're a teenager. You're a young person. You made a mistake. We should rehabilitate you. We should treat you nice. No, they're saying lock you up. Lock you up for 20 years, lock you up for 25 years, lock you up for life. And they're getting away with it because everybody's fed up. Hurry up, dude. You know, it's 
92 black people in this penitentiary. Yeah, sure. And 516 white. Did you know what they do to you in there? Kill you. No, they'll misuse you. They'll misuse you in a way that you would never understand in life. What you sitting on this bench for? What I did. What did you do? Took my dad's car. Get up. Get up. Come out here. Tell them guys what you did. Stole my dad's car. He stole his dad's car. I've been here for 22 goddamn years. In hell. I want to share it with you. Let you know what you're headed for if you don't get your goddamn life together and know what you want from life. This is real. This is no plaything. It's a bad and ugly situation. It's a cesspool. It breeds. It's like a maggot. It works. And it takes your life away. And when you come here, you lose everything that you ever own in possessing life. Your pride, your life, your family, love. Nobody gives a fuck about you. Because now you're here in the penitentiary. And this is a bad goddamn place to be. I lay a many night and hear grown men cry. Grown men take their life because the goddamn pressure gets so hard. You can't stand it. You want to cry. You want to talk to somebody. But there's nobody there for you to talk to. You want to see your mom, your dad, your little sister or brother. But it's nobody there. It's nothing but loneliness. And four goddamn walls to look at. And you get full. Then you want to cry. Then you want to destroy the goddamn world. Why? Because you're lonely. You're lonely. You've been mistreated. Your life's been taken away from you. Everything. And you've become to get in a violent situation. And you want to destroy the world. And if you had the power to pull the switch on the end of time, Every son of a bitch wasn't right with his Jesus, he'd die like a goddamn dog. This is how I suffered for 22 goddamn years. Cold, hungry, can't go home because I got life. This is where I'll die. And when I die, they curl me out on the hillside, throw me in a motherfucking pine box. No names. 41690 with a little goddamn white cross on the hillside. This is where you'll be. This is the damn roller. Juke through a man's heart. Kill him. This is the knife which cut a man's throat. Blood run upon him. This is just an ordinary piece of metal. Drove clean through his head. This is an iron pipe. Beat a man's brains out until he was jelly. Is this what you want? No, sir. Yes, sir. This is what you want? No, sir. This is the life in here. It's a violent life. It's a cruel life, and nobody gives a fuck about you. And when you're laying there in that cell at night, and you're cold, and you're hungry, and nobody around you to talk to, you get angry. Everything has been taken away from me, and I want to take something too. Because everything that I've ever had or possessed it in life, it was taken away from me. 
my child, my wife, my brothers, my sisters. And I was very damn unfortunate not to have a mother. Is this the life you want? This the life you want? These are men that died a violent life because they act a goddamn fool. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? They couldn't stand it. They couldn't walk tall. They'll never be able to walk tall. But where are they at now? And the goddamn six foot hole on the motherfucking hill. Look good. It's an awesome goddamn sight, isn't it? Awesome! This is the very damn few that I've seen, that I've stepped over in the child lines, going to the child to eat the violence. Remember, the day that you sat here on this bench and I told you what a life was here in this prison, and not only this prison, but every prison across the continent, you're young and you can't survive. You can't weather the storm. It's going to be a many lonely night, and you can't make it. It's going to be a dark, shattered way. Remember, you have that opportunity. Take advantage of it and make something good of it. <laughs>